Good evening. Good Good evening, everyone. Praise God. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? I said, I'm glad I made it here tonight. Praise God. And uh, I'm glad you made it here tonight. And the Lord is with us because, first of all, according to the Word of God, you brought Him with you. And uh, we're thankful that you're here in the presence of the Lord with us together. I want to welcome our internet viewers tonight. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be in the world. I still stand amazed at technology today. And uh, the latest is artificial intelligence. Has anybody had any experience with artificial intelligence? If you have, raise your hand. Here's a couple. Two, I think. I saw my primary physician for my first visit of the year yesterday. And before our visit, when he came in, he said, is it okay if I use uh, artificial intelligence, AI? I said, what is that? And uh, he said, well, I have this app on my phone now. And when we begin to have our conversation, everything that is small talk, you know, how's the dog? How's the cat? How's the kids? Or whatever. He said, it cuts all that out and it only records for me medical things that we talk about. So I said, yeah, go ahead and use that, please. You can leave off the small talk, okay? <laughs> but the artificial intelligence. But I'm, I'm amazed at the technology today. And think about it. We're here in Palm Harbor on the west coast of Florida. And people in India, Africa, Russia, wherever they have Internet, can join us in our service tonight. Isn't that amazing? I think it's amazing, and I'm thankful for technology, so we always welcome or try to remember to always welcome our Internet viewers. But the Lord is here. Amen. And I tell you, God, the devil's on the march, but God's army is also on the march. Because in the last days, wickedness, the Bible said, would abound. But he said, my grace, the hope is, my grace shall much more abound. And I'm thankful for the grace of God that is spread abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. My wife Joy is coming with prayer requests tonight. Prayer requests are important and prayers are needed. And God will answer your prayers. Expect God to act. Like I'm teaching on Sunday morning. Expect God to act when we pray. Amen. Hi everybody. It's good to see everybody here tonight. The, um, I just want to read something real quick out of Psalms 37. 23. The steps of a good man are directed and established by the Lord when he delights in his way and he busies himself with his every step. Though he fails, I'm sorry, though he falls, the lighting up here is a little different. <laughs> though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord grasps his hand and support and upholds him. You know, when I read this and we think about every step that we have, that does help. Thank you. <laughs> A lot. Um, that the Lord delights in our way, but he's with us no matter what we're going through. And I praise God for that. You know, as a parent, as a wife, and as a grandmother, as all the things we have to do, all of us, male or female, you know, we just praise God that God is directing our steps. God does love us. He holds our hand. We're not perfect, but you know what? He's there by us all the time. He is our rock. He is our shield. And if we just stop and just think about him, we were talking about it tonight in prayer meeting, that, you know, we just need to stop sometimes and decide where we're going to be on the scale. And if you just stop and just get into that prayer mode and say, Jesus, just Jesus, I need you. I need your help. He's there to help us. <clears throat> and I praise God for that because we, if anybody needs him, I do. <laughs> and I tell you, we, we all are going to be going through battles more and more and more as the time gets closer for his soon return. I can't wait. And um, I am getting ready more and more <laughs> every day to go. I tell you what, thank God I don't have to take baggage. And so... Um, we're just going to go straight up in the air. That's right. Amen. No packing. Uh, Jim Shapin isn't here tonight, but he's still um, healing. He was here Sunday. Praise God. And he's healing from, um, uh, this is another Jim, healing from surgical procedure to remove the growth in his neck. 
Jared, glaucoma causing blindness. Kathy R, extreme low sodium. Uh, Mary Ann died. You know, I just saw her during the prayer meeting. She was sitting right there where Harold is, and we were so jam-packed, and I was so happy to see her. She looked very frail, very weak, and I felt bad because I didn't get to love on her as long as I wanted to and really get to talk to her. The service was getting ready to start, and she told me she was not doing good, and I was just praying for her. Praise God, we know where she's at with that pink hair. <laughs> and um, I, I think the Lord loves pink hair. So let's continue to pray for her family and friends. Uh, Kimberly, her daughter, the same week that her mother passed, uh, found out that she has she had bladder cancer, but she had bladder cancer and it went to the lymph nodes. But we know who the healer of all these are. These, these diseases are it's Jesus. So we're just going to lift up all these people here today. And if there's any, I have private prayer requests. I know many of you have many prayer requests. We're just going to lift them up to the Lord. There's many that aren't here tonight that would like to be here that can't be here. And we praise God that God is our healer. He is our healer. He's our healer. Let's walk in it. Let's hold fast to all that God's done for us because he is our healer. And you have to take it by force. You just can't say, oh, it happened and I'm walking the devil will come and try to steal that from you, but don't let him. You just say, oh, no. It's like slime. You just got to kind of walk through it or slug it off and say, oh, no, that's not going to happen. I am the heel to Jesus. So we just come before you, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name that you are our healer. We thank you for every prayer request that's on here, Lord. We ask that you strengthen them, heal them, every cell, every bit of the blood, every bit of God, of even their mindset, Jesus. But, Lord, we know that you're our healer. We thank you that you have healed so many, that you continue to heal more um, that have needs in our church, Lord. And we give you praise and we give you glory, Lord, that you are the lifter of our head and you are providing everything that we need through your word as we stand on and believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Stand with me, would you please, and give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Well, God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given unto us a spirit of power a spirit of love and a sound mind i know that god has not given us a spirit of fear god has not given us a spirit of fear but he has given unto us a spirit of power a spirit of love and a sound mind i'm going to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, for He has given unto us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and the sound. I, I said, God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given unto us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and the sound. Do that again. I said, God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a sound mind. I'm going to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, for He has given unto us a spirit of power, a spirit of love. Hallelujah. How many know it's true? God has not given us a spirit of fear. Hallelujah. We'll let God arise. 
face and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God, let God arise. I said, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let again a few times because I'm teaching on God will drive out all your enemies and dealing on Sundays and I'll try to endeavor to end the message series on the enemies of hope because the devil wants to destroy you and beat you down till you have no hope whatsoever but God is restoring hope in the hearts of his people today amen and it's good to know the enemies of hope and who the enemies are and identify them so that when they show up, you're not caught unawares and you're ready to defeat the enemy that comes along to defeat you. Amen. Let God arise. His enemies be scattered. Let God arise. His enemies be scattered. Let God arise. And His enemies be scattered. Let God let God arise. I said, let God arise. His enemies be scattered. Let God arise. And His enemies be scattered. Let God arise. His enemies be scattered. Let God, let God Praise God. Joy every once in a while will ask me, when are we going to do the song Highway to Heaven? That was one of her mother's favorite songs. How many know there is a highway called holiness that is a highway to heaven? Holiness is simply righteousness or right living. Amen? I said holiness is really just simple, godly, right living. Amen? How many know there is a highway that leads to the glory land. Amen. There's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there but the pure in heart. Oh, there's a highway to heaven. I'm walking up the King's Highway. I know there's a highway seated in the presence of the Lord. Troy, come here. I want you to sing tonight. I, he's getting ready to leave to go to see his sister. And he'll be gone a couple weeks probably. And uh, we appreciate Brother Troy. He's a faithful servant of the Lord. Amen. Our ushers are coming to receive our tithe and offerings tonight. Thank you, Greg and Harold. I got a, uh, by the way, I did, we have a check and it, the, 
the name and everything's torn off. And you can't read the signature. And it's a $200 check to the church. And we don't know who's it belong, who it belongs to. And we'd like to find that out. If you happen to be that person, please let me know your name so it can go in the computer correctly. But I, I received a, 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 a $25 check from a, a lady in Fredericville, Pennsylvania. And I think she might have been here during Ted Shuttlesworth's revival. And she said, I want to give a little offering on the chairs. Isn't that nice of her? I really appreciate that so much. Came in the mail this week. So we just thank God for that. We thank God for all of you that are faithful in your tithes and offerings. And make no mistake about it. We appreciate everything that comes through these doors in the way of gifts. So that we can do the work of God. Amen. Amen. Father, receive the tithe that's brought and the offerings that are brought tonight. And we give you glory and praise for the lives that are represented here that are faithful to you in their giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. God bless you as you give. There we go. Take this check, please. Can't hardly give money away, huh? Amen. Brother. Amen. amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Pray for my sister. She's, she's in transition. She's not going to be here much longer. She's going to be with the Lord before I know it. And uh, that's why I'm going up for a couple of weeks to be with her and love on her. She's going to have a mini concert for me for 14 days in a row. So she'll be tired of hearing me. Life is easy when you're up on that mountain. And you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But things change, then you're down in a valley. But don't lose hope, for you're never alone. For the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, He'll make them right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. You talk of faith when you're up on that mountain. But talk comes so easy when life said it's best. Then you're down in the valleys with trials and temptations and that's when your faith is really put to the test sing with me you know this song god on the mountain is still god in the valley when things go wrong, He'll make them right. For the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. God of the day is still God in the night. Amen. Thank you. King David said it well. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He indicated there that he was going through it. He wasn't going to remain there in the valley. He was going to ascend the mountaintop again. Amen. How many know you don't have to stay in the valley? 
I said, how many know you don't have to stay in the valley? And everybody's going to have a few valley experiences, believe me. In fact, the Word teaches that. But thank God we don't have to live and remain and stay in the valley of the shadow of death. We can come out and climb up the mountain again and put our heads in the clouds of exhilarating victory. And we can soar where the eagles fly instead of being down below the snake line. We need to get up above the snake line where the eagles fly. Amen? Now, I do have some announcements, and I did not forget, but we are having a memorial service Saturday at 2 o'clock here in the auditorium for Cecilia. I trust you can plan to be with us. I did hear from her daughter, uh, Stephanie, uh, yesterday, and she's supposed to get me some other material to put together to get the service program the way that it should be, and we're going to believe God to honor her in a wonderful way on Saturday at 2 o'clock. So please put that in your calendar. Uh, I will be sending out a phone invite. It's already recorded. It'll go out tomorrow night. uh, Or pardon me, it'll go out uh, Friday night for Saturday's memorial service to remind everybody that would not be here or get this announcement. So remember that, please. Put that in your schedule. And movie night's coming up before we know it. And the ladies' meeting's coming up before you know it. We got movie night on Friday night and the ladies' ministry on Saturday following movie night. So it's going to be a good weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You'll feel like you're back in a protracted revival again. All right. Praise God. How many brought a Bible with you? Good. I don't know if the, the new Bibles will be in for your, so that if you forget it, we'll have one for you there at your seat. Praise the Lord. I've been using as a text for this series of messages, Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, verse number 9, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby you will know that the living God is among you, And that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites. And we have covered those three people, groups, nations that came against Israel. And they came against them with a specific spirit and a specific agenda. How many understand that God has an agenda but Satan has an agenda? And these people, nations, and their spirit is still alive today. Tonight I want to deal with the Perizzites. And God said, I'm going to drive them out also. I'm going to drive out all of your enemies. Thank God we don't have to fear. We don't have a spirit of fear. There's a lot of enemies that come against us. But thank God we have victory over all of our enemies through the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our victor. Amen? Amen. Now the word uh, parasite. Oh, by the way, I have another announcement. uh, uh, Greg Roth is on Facebook. And he's on live on Thursday nights, I believe, aren't you? Thursday nights. What time, Greg? 7 o'clock, Thursday night. So tomorrow night, you can, he teaches on, on Facebook. And so you can jump in and watch those on Thursday night at 7 p.m. I've been wanting to announce it. It slips my mind. It had almost hit me, uh, slipped again. And I thought, no, i got to make sure I get that in tonight. Praise God. Now, the word parasite has an interesting meaning. It means unprotected. It means an unwalled village. But it also has another uh, meaning to it, and that is squatters. Now, we have recently in the news heard a lot about squatters in America. And uh, what it's about is uh, if you, say, uh, live in a certain place and you leave for three months, six months, and uh, they discover that you're not there, the squatters come and take up residency in your home. Your apartment, your condo, whatever the case. And uh, once a squatter gets in, in some states, it's hard to get them out. Have you followed that in the news? I think our governor has done something that says we ain't going to have no squatters in Florida. Okay. <laughs> but uh, so, so parasite means unprotected. Remember that. 
an unwalled village and squatters. The parasite spirit seeks an unguarded opening in our lives, you see. That's why we have to be on two things. We have to be on the, on the offensive, but we also have to be on the defensive. And to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, we have to be both. We have to be offensive believers, but we also have to be defensive believers. And we have to defend against enemies that would come against us. They look, the, the Spirit looks for an unguarded moment in your life and wants to come and squat there. Once these spirits, if you ever let them in, sometimes it's just hard to get them out. Amen? They're squatters. They want to remain. And, and they can do a lot of damage when we leave an opening in our life that's unprotected. Now, the Lord saves us. We understand that. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that He shed on the cross of Calvary. We place our faith in that exclusively. But we're to protect what God has given to us. Because Satan wants to steal the good thing that God's done in your life. And he wants it. Don't give him an opening so he can get in. Go to Ezekiel chapter 38, please. E uh, chapter 38. And I believe uh, I'll read from uh, the, the New King James first. And then I'll give the NIV rendering of the 10th through the 12th verses. The 10th. Uh, verse reads like this, chapter 38 in Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, On that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind and you will make an evil plan. Now follow me please. You will say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages and I will go into a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates. Verse 12. To, and here's what the enemy comes to do. To take plunder. And to take booty. To stretch out your hand against the waste places. That are again inhabited. And against a people gathered from the nations. Who have acquired livestock and goods. In other words they, they have something to steal that's worth something. Okay, when they dwell in the midst of the land. And let me give you the NIV rendering of those verses, probably two of them. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Oh, that day, on that day, thoughts will come into your mind and you will devise an evil scheme. You, and he's talking about the evil army that comes against God's people will say, I will invade the land of unwalled villages. We've heard a lot about walls in the past few years, haven't we? I said, we've heard a lot about walls. How many understand that uh, the New Jerusalem has walls? And, and that's 1,500 miles high, by the way, real high walls. And it has gates. 150 miles of gate space on either side of that four square city. And, and, and there's strict vetting, by the way. We just sang a little bit about it. None can walk up there but the pure in heart. What makes you have a pure heart? The blood of Jesus. The, I said the blood of Jesus. But I will invade the land of unwalled villages. I will attack the peaceful and unsuspecting people. All of them living without walls and without gates and bars. Now Joshua was warning the Israelites that when they enter their land that had been promised to them, that they were not to let their spirits go unprotected. Unprotected. In other words, don't get careless and drop your guard. We must be on guard at all times. Somebody missed a good place to say hallelujah or amen or glory to God or something. In Job, I, I love the book of Job. Most Bible scholars, and you really don't have to be a Bible scholar to, to understand this, is the oldest book in the Bible. Job, the book of Job. 
And uh, there's a lot of lessons to be learned for today in our lives from what Job experienced and what he went through. And God was silent all that time, by the way. And Job, in chapter 1 and verse 10, it says that the devil went up before God because there was not an opening in his life. Let me say that again. There was no opening in his life. He says, God, here's the problem with me going against Job. You put some walls about him. There's a hedge about him. There's a wall around him. There's protection around him. If you take away that protection, I'll show you that Job is just like everybody else. Because the Bible said he feared God. And he stood against evil. But the devil said, I want to get in and I want to attack him. But I, I can't attack him. I can't come against him because there's a wall or there's a hedge or there's protection around him. Let me tell you, God's given us some protection. He's given us his name, the name of Jesus. And you can use it against the enemy that comes against your soul. Job protected, first of all, his person. His stand with God. We need to examine every day our, our position or our stand in God. He protected his family, his possessions, his job, his influence. And these are the areas that this parasite Spirit looks to attack in your life and in my life. He wants to come against your family. He wants to come against your job, your, your possessions. He wants to come against your, your influence. He wants to come against your life of serving God. And you need to be aware of that. He's, a, he's an enemy that wants to attack you. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit... You, you hear me say this often, you need to be strong in your spirit. I see a lot of people trying to take care of their body, and I'm not against that, by the way. And they eat, hopefully healthy. My doctor told me I need to watch my diet. I've been watching it. <laughs> but I know what he means. He explained it to me. And I already have AI. <laughs> Proverbs 28, 25, 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit, now get this please, is like a city that is broken down and without walls. A very informative and serious verse there in Proverbs by Solomon. You see, the enemy will come to attack you when you're angry, when your temper is out of control. Follow me, please. When you rage in your spirit, when you lack faith in the Word of God, when you get depressed, and I mentioned this Sunday, I believe, depression, a great enemy that comes against hope. When you criticize when you gossip, when you lose control of lust, your emotions, and much, much more. The wise man, Solomon, said, if you have no rule over your spirit, you're like a city that's broken down and there's no walls. And if there's no walls there, the enemy is free to come in and squat. And when he squats, you will have a life of torment. You will not be at peace. Amen. Speak to me, please. What are some of the walls that we need to have in our lives? What are the walls? That's a good question, isn't it? Our faith is a wall. Our faith must be strong. Let me tell you something. You don't get strong in faith by shouting and dancing and hooping and hollering and even singing. Though those things are good and important in their place. But faith cometh by hearing. And I want to strengthen that a little bit more. By knowing the word of God. 
and applying the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, knowing, applying the Word of God to your life. That will build your faith up. And faith is a mighty wall against the enemy, the parasite spirit that wants to come and squat in your life. Our emotions, when they're under control by the Holy Spirit, are a wall against the enemy that comes against us. Keeping a right attitude is a wall. The way you think is a wall that, that's, that, that comes up in your life that strengthens you and the enemy cannot get. Praise and worship and prayer are walls against the parasite spirit. Well, let me stop right there and say one of the greatest walls is the Word of God. His Word I hid in my heart that I might not sin against Him. Thank you, Jesus. God is our shield. And we have walls that He's built in our lives. Go to Proverbs chapter 18, please. And verse 14. And uh, let me give you uh, the New King James and then a paraphrase of, uh, of that verse of Scripture. Proverbs 18, 14. It is in my Bible somewhere. If you're there, say amen. amen. You beat me. <clears throat> Make sure I'm reading the right verse. Verse 14. A man's gift makes room for him. Or, I'm sorry, me. The spirit of a man, in verse 14, will sustain him in sickness. That's why you need to be strong in your spirit. But who can bear a broken spirit? How many understand that the devil would like to break your spirit? He'd like to break your spirit. A paraphrase of that 14th verse of Proverbs 18 goes like this. A man's courage can sustain his broken body. But when courage dies, what hope is left? The King James says the spirit of a man will sustain him in his infirmities. But a wounded spirit who can bear. You see, our body and our life is upheld by our spirit. As I just mentioned a moment ago, people take great pains in taking care of their bodies. And we should because they are temples of the Holy Spirit when we're a child of God. So don't think that I'm not concerned about your body. But many people, though they take care of their physical bodies, neglect something vastly more important, and that is their spirit. Because their spirit will sustain other things, the other things of their life. Be strong in your spirit. Be strong in the power of His might. Strengthen your spirit every day. Make sure that you nourish your spirit. Give it some food to chew on. And that is the Word of God. Amen? The, the parasite spirit wants you to let your guard down. And he wants you to be weak in your spirit. He wants to take away your courage. Remember we just sang, be, uh, be of good courage. He wants to attack your courage. We should be courageous children of God. We should not be timid. We, we should not be ashamed. We should not be backward about our faith. The world at large is not backward about their faith and what they place their faith in. They've placed their faith in evil. Let me say that again. I said they've placed their faith because, you see, when God gives you faith, you can appropriate it. You can assign it wherever you desire or wherever you choose. People don't understand that, I don't think. God has given to everyone the measure of faith. And you can choose to allocate that or apply that wherever you choose. Thank God all in this room tonight and probably all at least or most that are viewing by way of the internet have assigned their faith to Jesus. 
They've assigned their faith to the cross of Christ. They've assigned their faith to the resurrected Christ. They've assigned their faith to the living God in this word. But Satan wants you to let your guard down. And he wants you to assign your faith to something else other than the Lord. And he wants to take away your courage. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We don't need weaklings in the church of the living God. We need people that are strong in the Lord and courageous in the Lord and bold in the Lord and are speaking out. Amen. I strengthened our statement of faith on our new billboard on US 19. We don't just stand for biblical principles. I added one word in there, moral principles. We stand for biblical moral principles. So we'll probably get some emails on that, calls on that, and attacks from that. But so be it. We have to speak out the truth against the lies and the deception of today. Daniel was upheld, it says, in Daniel 5, verse 12, and Daniel 6 and verse 3. Daniel was upheld by his excellent spirit, his excellent spirit. Even the king in that day saw something of excellence or different in a positive way in Daniel. That's why he was appointed in leadership in a strange land, if you will. The Apostle Paul, you'll remember he, when he landed or arrived in Rome after a terrible trip. Every time I read in the book of Acts that tragic sea voyage on his journey to Rome, I'm amazed. And you know the story. But when he arrived in Rome, the people asked him about his frame of mind. In fact, they said to him, what do you think? How do you put your thoughts together? We want to know why you think and talk the way you do. He didn't get there. And begin to reminisce and go over that tragic sea voyage where they almost drowned, but they all floated in because God said they would, they would land safely. He didn't tell them all about the ship breaking in two and them swimming for their life. He didn't tell them about the, the viper that came up out of the fire. And by the way, when the fire of God begins to fall, there'll be some snakes that start coming out. So be aware of that, obviously. And, uh, but he didn't talk about the viper coming up there and biting him. And how God delivered him from the venom of that poisonous snake that should have killed him. But they said, we want to we know. Well, you say, what, what, what was he talking about? The Bible says that he was talking to them about the kingdom of God and the power of the gospel. The kingdom of God and the power of the gospel. The kingdom of God was in Paul's spirit. And the parasite spirit did not have any entrance whatsoever in the apostle Paul's life. Because he had a wall of protection up. And God's looking for people that will not bend, budge, or bow to the gods of this world, but have walls of protection of strength in their lives. Paul wrote to Timothy, and he wrote a lot of things to Timothy. But one of the things he said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 22, he said, The Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit. Be with thy spirit. He wrote to the Galatian church, the Galatians, in chapter 6 and verse 18 of Galatians. And he said, the grace of our Lord Jesus be with your spirit. 
You see, there's a whole lot in the Bible, and in particular in the New Testament, about being strong in your spirit. If you're strong in your spirit, you're going to have a wall of protection against the spirits of the enemy, the parasite spirit that wants to squat in your life and mess it all up. Let me tell you something. When these parasite spirits come into people's lives, they are miserable people. Man, it's quiet in here. But I know you're a good audience. And you're an intelligent people. But, but, but they, they're not a happy people. They're not a joyful people. They're not a victorious people. Because they've allowed one of those spirits to come in and squat there and dwell there and stay there. One of the meanings of the word grace. I love the word grace. Grace. And this is a definition that I received from an old minister years ago. He called the grace of God, God's full operational power in one's life. God's operational, full operational power in one's life. That's the grace of God. And God's power is great. God is concerned with wrong attitudes today. Wrong spirits. There is a mentality in our society today that is very wrong, very perverted, very opposite to God's mentality, to spiritual mentality, to righteous mentality. People, young and old alike, and by the way, some of the worst sinners are old sinners. Because they've been practicing at it longer. Mm. And it, the thing is, this generation has opened their spirit to the parasites. And evil has come and squatted in their lives. The parasite spirit wants to separate you. Separate you from God. He wants to isolate you. He wants to take you from what is right and good and instill evil in your spirit. And uh, I need to say this. The parasite spirit operates in lies and innuendos. In lies and innuendos. And we see this especially today in the political arena. The attacks against many times very good people and they sow lies and innuendos to destroy their character. How many know what I'm talking about? And many times the very thing that they're lying about the person they're actually involved in themselves doing those things themselves that's a parasite spirit by the way Joshua warned the Israelites guard your spirit don't be weak make no opening for him you've got to have walls put up in your life of protection Paul puts it this way in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. Make no place or no room for the devil to come in. Let me tell you something. If you open yourself to him, he will take advantage of it. Make no mistake about it. But also, if we open our spirit to the Lord, he'll take advantage of that too. And he'll come in and give you what you don't have. He'll give you the power and the strength and the anointing you need. It works that way also with godliness. Amen? But if it, Paul said, make no room for the devil. Don't give him, a, don't give him just a, even a little crack to get in. The news is full of items about people who have been hurt. And some of them destroyed because they let their guard down. They let their guard down. And he goes about, and you know this scripture, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Well, I want to tell you something. We're not going to be 
the roaring lions meet. I said, we have made a choice that we're not going to be the roaring lions meet. You see, you have a life, and your life should be a life of praise unto God, and not meet for the devil. I, I want to say that again, your life should be a praise unto God, and not meet for the devil, Satan, that roaring lion that comes against people. Thank you, Jesus. I feel that in my spirit tonight. Praise to God. You, we, we don't praise Him enough. I, I like what King David said. I like a lot of things King David said. But one thing he said, and, and it's an old chorus. We've sung it here many, many times. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the noontime. Praise Him when the sun goes down. My dad said, I'm going to praise him constantly. He said, if, if, I was, if, if I was an alligator, I'd open my mouth as wide as I could and praise God as loud as I could. You know, an alligator has a big mouth. <laughs> so uh, the question we have to ask ourselves every day, have I left any opening, unconsciously even, for the parasite to come and squat in my life and attack me? Have I, have I even, un, you know, sometimes, have you ever done things sort of unconsciously? Yes. Huh? Sure we have. Conscious or unconscious. Have we, have we left an opening? Have we made an opening for him to come in? You see, we can close it by first asking, if we have, we can ask, we can close that opening by asking God to forgive us. Forgive us. God, help us to have forgiving spirits. And help us to have merciful spirits. Everybody wants mercy. But we need to dispense mercy. If you want mercy to come back to you, that which a person sows is what they're going to reap. Right? That which a person, a man or woman, what we sow is what we're going to reap. Just like one preacher said, what you rip, you're going to sow. And what you sow, you're going to reap. Some of you got that. If you have a sense of humor, you got it. If you don't, you won't. Hallelujah. So, so mercy, so righteousness, so peace, so, so joy, so, so happiness. And you'll find out it'll start coming back to you in waves of victory and waves of glory. Praise God. And then after you ask the Lord to forgive you for even... Oh, making a, a little opening for the enemy to come in. If he, even if it's a little one, he's going to come in and take advantage of you. Then you need to ask the Holy Spirit to show you how to build those walls of protection around your life so it doesn't happen. Amen? I hear a lot of people say about talking about prayer partners. I'll tell you who the best prayer partner is. Turn to Romans. One of my favorite chapters. In the book of Romans is Romans chapter 8, obviously. Powerful, powerful chapter. Verse 27. Let's see what it says about a prayer partner. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those that love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. So if you really want a real, true prayer partner, make it the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit. And, and, and if He's your prayer partner, you're going to pray in His language. You're going to speak to Him in His language. How many know that God has given to us a spiritual language, not just our natural, normal language? I said, he's given us a spiritual language. And so when he's your prayer partner, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. He will pray through you. And he can get through when you can't get through. I said, he can get you through when you can't get through any other way. And I'll tell you what, when you, if you want to break through, you first of all have got to pray through. And when you pray through... And many times you can't do it in your English language. You need to get that prayer language that God's actually given to you. That's the language of the Spirit. And when you begin to pray in the Spirit, 
It'll open up the windows of heaven, and they won't be brass, but they'll be open windows, and He'll pour your Spirit out upon you that you're not able to contain it all. It's so wonderful. And it will be joy unspeakable and full of glory. Thank you, Jesus. Make no place, no opening for the parasite to get in and squat there. Close all openings and build those walls up. Praise God. And, and they're going to be godly walls that will be high and they'll be strong. And the enemy will not be able to penetrate it or climb over it. Praise God. When I was a boy in Sunday school, we used to sing a little song. So high you can't get over it. So low you can't get under it. So wide you can't get around it. You got to come in at the door. Hallelujah. And the door of the Lord is open for us to come in. Amen. I'm going to come through his door. And not the devil's door. Hallelujah. Stand with me, would you please? I'm through tonight. I'm enjoying these uh, messages, by the way. I hope you are. But I'm enjoying them a lot. Because the Word of God is strong and mighty and powerful. I'll tell you what. I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm confident that I would not be standing here tonight if it wasn't for the strong Word of God in my spirit. I am confident of that. Very much so. Somebody said today, have a great service tonight. I said, I'm planning on it. And why I plan on it is because I trust in the Holy Spirit for it. I said, I trust the Holy Spirit for that to take place. Thank you, Jesus. Would you come down front, all of us? I want to I try out our open, wide altar space tonight a little bit, okay? We have a little more room for you now. Praise God. Join me, please. Hallelujah. I want to pray for all of you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I'm still believing God for strength to come every day in your body. Are you driving that Cadillac? Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You're... you're Thank you, Jesus. I wish that the doctors again say in that bunch of tests go back tomorrow for more. Yeah, well, the Lord's raising you up. I've seen you when you was right near death. From your heart to infections to everything bad. And you're alive tonight and driving your car. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know if little Barbara... Uh, is still driving her car any or not. She is. I, I, I'm amazed at her. She's a wonderful lady. What is she, 98? 98 years old. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And if, uh, the, I'm waiting for the first 100 here in the member of our church. We need to have a big party when they get to be 100. The whole church needs to turn out for that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Sir, did the Lord touch you during our revival with Brother Ted? Yes, he did. Praise God. And uh, Joy's sister, Joyce, has a powerful testimony of what the Lord has done for her and her body and her life. And uh, if you've got a testimony, let me know about it, please. I want to have some more testimonies on Sunday morning of what God is doing. I thank God for what he has done. But I'm thanking God for what he's now doing. I'm living in not just the past, but it, I thank God for the past. And I, I reminisce, but I don't dwell in the past. There's a difference in reminiscing in the past and dwelling in the past. We've got to move forward in God right now. Amen. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Father, I do thank you tonight. For these are your faithful people that have come out on a Wednesday night. And many have joined us by way of the internet on Facebook and YouTube. And I thank you for your word, your powerful word, your informative word, your instructive word. And, and Lord, I thank you that it, it, it's getting into our spirit every day so that we're strong in our spirit. And Lord, we, we're guarding ourselves against any evil that could come in to bring destructive things. And remain there because sometimes they come and, 
they stay a long, long time. And the secret for victorious living is not to have any openings so they cannot get in. And we're strong in you every day. I pray, Lord, for our church family. I pray that they will have spiritual strength and healing. I ask God that they will have mental or emotional stability and healing. For sometimes they're going through one of those valleys that Brother Troy sang about this morning. And they need to come out of that valley and ascend the highest mountain again in their life. And I pray, Lord, that you will bring healing to their emotions, their mind, their, their thoughts. And then I pray for their bodies. We have a number of our church family that they need mighty miracles. We thank you for the miracles that we have seen just recently. We thank you for creative miracles that you have done. Thank you for healing Darlene Gersh. Even while she was praying for another lady in her leg lengthened out that had been short because of an operation and I thank you for that but I, I'm, I'm asking that Lord for others that need your divine touch in their bodies that you would bring your divine healing to bear upon them even this hour as we pray together some Lord are watching by way of the internet and they need you to heal them in their spirit or their mind or their body I pray that it shall be so in their lives today and Lord, when you do these things, we don't take credit for it because we had nothing to do with it. It's you, that, you are the one that did it all and deserve all the praise and all the glory for what you've done. So I praise you in advance for your divine deliverance, your divine touch, your divine healing in all three areas of people's lives today. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Does anybody remember Catherine Kuhlman? Catherine Kuhlman. There was a number of things that impressed me about Catherine Kuhlman. But one of them was she was very careful to give God the glory for what he did. And not take the glory to herself. She would verbalize that over and over again. Because she wanted the people to know that it wasn't Catherine Kuhlman. But it was God that was doing these marvelous and miraculous things. And so we have to understand that all good and perfect gifts come from God. And give Him the glory and the praise and the credit for it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, fathers, we leave this auditorium tonight and this service. We do not leave you behind. But we, we have you living inside of us. And we take you with us outside these doors. We pray, Lord, that our hearts will be attuned to you. Bring a peaceful, calm spirit over each and every one of us under the sound of my voice tonight. A peaceful and a calm spirit in this unrestful world that we live in. Where there's wars and rumors of wars and turmoil and confusion and anger and hatred. Give us, Lord, your wonderful peace that passes all understanding. And I'll praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Saturday, today I was studying. And uh, I was in my car studying for about an hour and a half. And uh, I felt like the Lord really laid a good message on my heart for Saturday in the memorial service. A message that I've really never ministered from that area or thought or text. And uh, I, 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 I just want God to speak to some people that will be here. I know you'll be here probably, but there's going to be some backsliders and some that have never known Jesus as their Savior in the service on, uh, on Saturday for that memorial service for Cecilia and uh, we're going to believe God for a wonderful not only a remembrance of her life but what she stood for she loved Jesus and I believe people saw Jesus in her life praise God go with God and he will go with you I'll see you Sunday well I'll see you Saturday 2 o'clock and Sunday morning at 10 o'clock Praise God. Have a great day.